whoever designed this dial is a rock star. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an order in for this in blue. I'm really enjoying today. <laughs> I'm fine. So we have some questions, Kevin. Sure, let's go. Just roll with them? All right, so these are from my followers. They want to hear your thoughts. So yeah. the first question is, what do you think about watches made by jewelry brands? Like the Cartiers of the world, the Chopards of the world? I own Cartier watches for the sake of the art of the jewelry, not for the movement. Mm -hmm. But the Panther and some of the, the these brands that have come through the style and the fashion from the 20s and the 30s, I appreciate that work. I am not buying them for the reference movement. So you have to put your, 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 your mind in a different place. My very first watch was a Cartier. I, I, my first Santos. Santos, exactly. And so, and when, and when we hit the first 50 million on O shares, everybody wanted a Cartier. And so we weren't buying reference movements. We were just buying a beautiful watch made by a jeweler. I'm cool with it, but it is not the same as going deep collection. Like that's, you understand what I'm saying. Completely, completely. I'm ready to have the watch depreciate, even though they haven't. I'm buying jewelry. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But it's not like the, the, the work that goes into buying a Vacheron or an AP or whatever, but I, I get it. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not negative on it. Got it. All right, so the next question, best value in all of watchmaking, in your opinion, what do you think? There is only one answer. Okay. Grand Seiko is the best value in the world for a watch. People are going to love that. It's, but it's true. I mean, when I got into that brand, I couldn't believe the value. So when you buy a Grand Seiko, you're buying deep heritage of master watchmaking. And so I'm proud to be, you know, people say to me, what is Grand Seiko? I said, yes, Grand Seiko. Yes. The best value in my collection. And I've stepped up. I bought some very rare pieces there. But I'm telling you, it is the best value. And if you don't have Grand Seiko, you're crazy. You should get even one of their production models is 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 Patek quality. I know, and you're and you're dealing five to ten thousand dollars. Yeah, it's it's amazing. For five thousand dollars, you can buy an eighty thousand dollar watch. That's yeah. the way I look at it. It's honestly true. It's yeah. honestly true. Yeah. And I think we're going to see the prices going up. I agree. They're, they're catching I, I, up. You can see. It. And it's interesting with Seiko or Grand Seiko is the part they have connection to Seiko. And you can see how Seiko is going a little bit up market with some of their entry level watches to really kind of position Grand Seiko. This whole US market, they're I, trying to tap into it. I think they will. It's just, it's just starting, but everybody I'm talking to now has the buzz, just like you and I are talking. It is the best value in the world. Put it there. Nothing yeah. more needs to be said. Next question. If you could only leave one watch to the next generation, what would it be? This could be to a son, this could be to anybody. Whoever this figure is that's going to be getting this watch. Oh. You give one watch to the next oh, generation. Oh, Teddy, you, can, you come up with these questions that are just This is not me. I can't take credit for it. Okay, but you're killing me. Right. <laughs> um, it's probably going to be an F.P. Jordan. F.P. Jordan? Anything it, in particular? What would it be? It's probably, probably one of the one of ten boutique anniversary limited I mean, 10 watches that only exist, you know, you own one beside nine others. That's incredibly special. Um, it's a tough question because I have Pateks that are just spectacular. I've got amazing Rolexes. But when you're talking about one that's going to really, really, really appreciate immensely in value, I view Jorn as buying a Picasso while Picasso's alive. <laughs> That's what's going on. <laughs> and so when he passes, and I don't want that to happen, these watches that were made in his lifetime are going to take on a special meaning. And that's why I say that, and that's why I'm collecting them. But I, I, I love them in a different way that I love Patek and my APs and my Rolexes and my, you know, all the rest of the watches. But you're asking me a tough question, I'm giving you a tough answer. Well, it's only a tough answer to make there. Next question, beater watches. The whole idea about a beater watch, what do you wear when you're wearing a t-shirt, you're just lounging around? I mean, I, I feel like, you know, an entrepreneur, yeah. a guy like you're, yeah. you, I mean, you're, you're probably not lounging around that much, but what do you wear when you're lounging around? 
I go to my my go-to beater watch is a white face steel Daytona. That's some type of beater. Yeah, and it's it's such a classic, and that's my weekend watch. But I have to tell you, Teddy, these days, and I'm not kidding, and my wife thinks I'm crazy, I'm wearing as many as three watches a day. I'm doing a morning watch, I'm doing the lunch watch, and I'm doing the evening watch. I have to, otherwise... I get it. I get it. I, I have to, because I've the got, I got a lot. I'm not saying how many I have. I've got a lot. And now I really have to do three a day. And so I am doing three a day. And what I'm... See, I'm traveling today with three watches. You're going to see later when I bring them out. There, I'm, I'm going to wear three watches today. All right. Stay Thanks. tuned, everybody. Yeah. Stay tuned. Next question. What have you been wearing a Shark Tank, primarily, on the wrist? So this year... Um, I had a really interesting, what I decided to do with wardrobe, because I really negotiate with wardrobe, mm -hmm. is I wore a different watch for every shoot. Hmm. And I said to wardrobe, listen, can I do it first of all? Will, will you let me do that? Because they have to edit. And she said, there's only one way that's going to happen. If you wear red bands consistently, I'll let you wear different movements, but it has to be red. And so we went through this dance with all the manufacturers to prepare the watches. And I, w I wore, the only, the only brand that I didn't wear was Patek because they couldn't make hmm. a red band. But that's the reason. The reasoning comes from wardrobe is just as much as it is your personal preference. It is, but also when you're, when you're working on your 240th episode and every one's had a red band in it, you have to have continuity. That's yeah, what it's called. It's a streak called. that you'd have to, I mean, that's a big streak to break. It's, so. And, so, and so, and even, and, and next year, so I included every, I, I took, every brand was represented in my collection, including Grand Seiko, and it was, a, it, it was wild. If you watch Shark Tank season 11, you're going to see a lot of watches. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Stay tuned, everybody. Last three Boom. questions. Oh, okay. Last three questions pertaining to today. Yeah. What was your favorite watch of the day? I think I know the answer. You purchased the watch. Yeah, I today. bought it. Um, well, you. It's, I bought it because of you. I mean, I had really not gone into Vacheron in much detail, and I had forgotten how beautiful that stuff is, and, mm -hmm. and I'd forgotten the heritage. I have. It's it's really the third horseman, mm -hmm. and so I'm very That's excited right. about what I bought there, and I'm I'm actually going to buy two pieces. And so it's, I don't buy one of anything because that, that's just being a tourist. If you're mm -hmm. going to build it in your collection, you've got to get a few pieces. But I really enjoyed that session because it clearly, when you, there's one thing to look at the watches in a catalog and there's the other wear them, you know. Then you really mm -hmm. experience the weight, the dial. That blue dial was spectacular. It was. And I'm glad I got that. So I love that. That was good. What about for brand to look at next? What, what do you want to look in a little more detail? Is there something you saw today that you want to maybe take a closer look at in the future? I'm going German. Going German? You're going to look at that? Yeah, I think so. Another question for everybody was, all right, you can put a watch on me. Yeah. You don't have to pay for it, but what, what do you think would look good on me? If you could pick out a watch for me. I picked all these watches out for you. Yeah, you you're right. One, right. You're right. Let's think of our, what was our first meeting today? Who was that with? JLC. Yes. The red the reverso? reverso for you. Should I hold out for that one? Should I make that happen? I, well, I, I just think that piece yeah. you can't go wrong with. It's beautiful. It, that red yeah. it did not. I mean, I think it, 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 so it for both for person. both of us that was immediate eye catcher, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was eye candy, mm -hmm. but the piece is beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a that's Good a beautiful choice. piece. That's a production watch. It is. But it's it's, I th the thinness of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To me, it's the red. The yeah. red and the And then the, the debate seconds. whether you engrave the other side or not, right? That's right. The debate. I, I would not engrave it. Personally. Neither would I. I'd leave I, it I mirror shining, which if is a something very... comes up for me to want to engrave it, I would wait for but that you know, you know when you have it, when you flip it over and you're just doing the mirror shine, people say, what is that? Like, yeah, that's true. It's part of the story. Yeah, is it the whole history with the so, polo so, players so, and not smashing so, the cases. And if I was going to get a watch for you, that would be the watch because I thought that was one of the, the hot watches of the day. It was one of the hot pieces. I mean, I, it, was, it was in my mind the whole day. I thought, gee, you know, that was really spectacular. If I was going to pick the one for you, it would be the, the Longa one. Yeah. Which, which, which Longa? I'd, I'd go with the, I think I might go white gold. White gold Longa one. That's what I think I would do for you. The, just the clean face. Yes, clean. Not the moon. You could do the moon, but I'd, I'd want to see all the variations. The ones that we saw, we didn't have it. The platinum yeah. would be nice, too, for you. Yeah. That and then, of course, overseas and then I think the 19, 20, 1921. Those would be my choices for you. That I thought you might hit Yeah, on. the Overseas was a runaway hit. That's great. Of the day, right? That's and fantastic. now I own it. So. Well, there's still more to do today. I know. Head inside. Let's yeah, go. let's go. Let's go to our last stop. Okay. Let's get out.
We did a great full day of watches today, yeah. Kevin, but you were very insistent on getting one more stop out of us. Yeah, we're, we're here in, uh, in, in something that's rather unique in the watch world, F.P. Journe. Mm -hmm. F.P. Journe is, is not a watch company, it's a culture. Mm -hmm. It's a cult, it's an art. It's something that is completely unique and different and either you're into it or you're not. Many people don't know this Maison, they don't know this brand. But once you get infected with the Jorn virus, you're fucked. <laughs> so I know you're infected. Yeah. Wanna go look at your pieces? Let's start. Let's do it. I mean, I wanna tell you something, Teddy. Yeah. In my whole life of collecting, I've been the incremental buyer. I start with a piece, and then I journey into the next piece, and the next piece, and the next piece. In the case of Jorn, first time in my life, I bought four pieces in one day. And Not many people you, can live to say that. And, and now you're going to see it. Now you're going to see it. And just getting them was next to impossible because the company only makes 900 watches a year. Mm -hmm. But when the Jorn virus infects you, everything changes. Let's go look at them. All right. So the, w the way I was introduced to this brand uh, was through a friend of mine who's a huge collector in the United Arab Emirates. Mm -hmm. And he said, have you ever heard of F.P. Journe? I said, no, and I'm a collector. I mean, if it, if it mattered, I would have heard of it. He said, no, 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 no. You have to do a deep dive into Journe. So what I decided to do, and this was only a few months ago, is I knew they had a boutique, because I went online, I saw they had a boutique in New York. So I called up the boutique and I said, can I speak to the manager? And her name was Michelle. And I said, hi, Michelle, I missed a wonderful from Shark Tank because I'm trying to use my leverage, you know, I'm being mm -hmm. honest with you, mm -hmm. Teddy. Right. I'm trying to say, look, you know, I collect watches. Can I come and show me the collection mm -hmm. in, in the boutique? Because I've heard great things about your watches. I don't know much about them. And I was going online and reading crazy reviews, crazy rabid love of this brand, people going nuts online, like I'd never seen before. So I was really intrigued. Mm -hmm. So I called her up and I said, can I come down today at four o'clock and just give me an hour, walk me through the line, I'm a quick study. She said, well, Kevin, um, today is our 10th anniversary of the New York boutique and F.P. Jordan himself is flying in from Switzerland oh, and he's no going way. to be here and we're also having a huge dinner party afterwards, would you be our guest? And I'm thinking, this must be karma. So what happened that night was, I met Michelle, I met F.P. Jorn, she was wearing this watch so stunning. on her hand, mm. this incredible blue, and which is just... It's not gonna translate over in the camera, we try no, our no, best, no, but, but it, you have to see this in person and, to fully and appreciate I, it. And I said to her, I love that watch, I must have it. And she said, not on your life, this is mine, and there are none to be had. <laughs> and what I learned about Jorn at that day was they only make 900 watches a year, so there are none to be had, because there are none. Everybody's bought them. I went to the society dinner that night, I met the most crazy collectors I've ever met in my life. They were nuts, and I got hooked. I got the Jorn virus. I came down here to Miami, I met Pierre, who you know, is sort of the American manager and a shareholder. Uh, of, uh, of F.P. Journe, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, I've never done this before in my life, Pierre, but I'm not a tourist with a brand. I'm a collector. Mm -hmm. I don't buy one watch. I buy a portfolio, like a stock portfolio. I want to reduce my risk. I want multiple watches. And we went through a long, long, long negotiation. I bought four watches. Oh my God. In, in one day? In one day. I've never done that before. How many people can say they have? But that just gives you an idea of, of Jorn is not, it's a culture. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's like buying a Picasso from Picasso when he was alive. Mm -hmm. Here's this with watchmaker, this crazy guy with his own opinions. Maybe you can influence him, maybe you can't. He's not making watches for anybody else except himself. And that's the purity of it. Mm -hmm. That's the essence of what Jorn is about. If you respect Jorn himself, that he will take you into a journey of watchmaking you've never had before. Now, I love my other brands. 
I'm not dissing Patek or Rolex or AP or anything I have, mm-hmm. but this is not like them. This is different. This is a man on a mission who makes watches out of, out of his own third eye. He designs the dial first and then he goes, he is the apocalypse now of watchmaking. <laughs> There's something wh- real about coming in here too, and I think yeah. this whole space is a representation of what it's like to own a Jordan piece. So they did a really great job about that. But you also just see from the man himself how this translates onto the watches because he's creating. When you, when you go into the different references, you realize you can't own just one. You need, mm-hmm. a, you need a portfolio because they're different visions. This is coming into its 20th year. Yeah, so let's look at the resonance. The resonance. And so when I wear this watch out into the open, and I'm, or I'm wearing it on television, a woman came up to me and she said, did Dally paint that watch? Because <laughs> it looks like the face is dripping. It does. That's crazy. It's but insane. this watch is crazy. This is a classic design that's probably one of the most legendary for Ref Pijorn and, and what he did. But, you know, when I say I buy a watch because I want to start a conversation, I've never had more conversations than I had with this. Interesting, really? Th- this is madness. People say, what's going on there? Is, is, is that two different time zones? Wait a minute, that's not the same as the one on the right. Mm-hmm. Is that a 24 hour on the left? I said, who cares? It is what it is. And even if you can't tell the time, it's a piece of art. It is a piece of art. And the technology within it actually powering. The, yeah. the, reson- the, the, the idea around resonance is incredible, but yeah. they're able to do it with those. But so, so out, out of the four, this probably um, really. That's the one that well, I've here. had more conversations started because I've been wearing them all. Now this piece is one of ten, and I went through a negotiation from hell to get this <laughs> because I was a, I was a new buyer and I was you know begging Pierre, who runs America, that I I would be a great ambassador for this piece, and he didn't give a shit. It was impossible. The, you know the great thing about Jorn is it doesn't matter who you are. It, you can be the richest guy on earth, and you're just another collector. Mm-hmm. You're not special. You have to really show your passion for these pieces to even get in the door. I think the interesting thing about Jorn is, like many watchmakers that are in the business of making money, many of them, which yeah. is fine, but you could tell that I, I it's about get, the watchmaking here. I don't get tell. that vibe from, from F. He, he doesn't care. He doesn't care at all. He cares about he, creating he watches. He probably has partners that do care, but he doesn't. <laughs> and so that's what I love about him. And so you're really... You know, you're, you're going on a journey with a genius. In, if you're a collector and you get infected with this virus, you are truly in trouble because you're going to keep buying and buying as these pieces come because you know you're buying Picassos. Mm-hmm. Everyone's a Picasso. There's going to come a time when FP is no longer with us, mm-hmm. and these are going to be just like Picassos. They're going to go skyrocketing in value. I really believe that about this. and so. You know, for me, it, it, it's when do I wear them? I mean, this, I have never, ever even thought about collecting a quartz watch. It's not really a quartz watch. That's the thing about this it. This is a crazy watch. Insane. It's insane. And I wear it a lot now. And when people see it, my son, who's an engineer, I showed it to him after, you know, had gone to sleep. And it, it went backwards to the right time. And he said, what the fuck <laughs> is that? Like... I said, this is a crazy watch, Trevor. This is a watch designed by a guy that wants the battery to last a decade. He said, that's insane. And for the viewers that are not familiar with what you're talking about, describe that. So what's happening is this thing will go into rest and after 30 Be- minutes. Because it actually has a, a sensor for movement and it mm-hmm. goes to sleep and uses just a few microns of electricity and it remembers what time it went to bed at and you could wake it up a week later and it's gonna go right back to the right time. Now, Incredible. this was made for women originally, but once guys got hooked on this, particularly over in, in the Middle East. 2016, I think they turned that on for men. Yeah, and, and, and it's just, you know, this piece is, it's the only quartz watch that I've ever collected, but it's a crazy watch. It's amazing. Yeah, made by a crazy guy. <laughs> That's, and, I, and I think it's a great entry level. If you've never had a Jorn before, if you can get one, it's, you know, it's, 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 for a, Jorn, it is the it's most, affordable, yes. it's affordable. Yes. It's sort of in the $12,000 range. And for what it is, it's an ama- amazing watch. The others are more expensive. Now this flagship, I just, I have not worn this on my wrist yet, Teddy. Can we I've do been, the honors right here? Is this yeah. happen right now? This, yeah, absolutely. This watch is, um, extremely coveted because of its dial. 
I'm sure it doesn't do justice on no. this camera, but you've got to get a close up. Depending on how the light hits it, it's black, it's blue, or it's a derivative of both. It's a stunning piece. I mean, feel it. And when combined with the tantalum, there's something about like the shade that the exactly. actual uh, material, how it just transitions so beautifully with that dial. And they accommodated me with this gorgeous red band. You know I need a red band for television. Yeah, Is that yeah. not stunning? It's amazing. You asked me off camera what would be my choice out of what's on the table. I, I was really surprised because you really? could, well, let's think about it. You, you chose that which is a relatively, mm -hmm. relatively inexpensive compared to this. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is one of 10. Well, I would I have mean, thought you... I mean, all day we've been talking about where do the eyes I've take seen, you? Where do the eyes take you? I've That's seen grown men weep when they know what this watch is because they will never have it. <laughs> and I, there's something special about that. I mean, in, in a collector's you know, vault, that's what, what matters in some ways. But I love this because the red dials on the red band are perfect. I saw this watch, Michelle showed it to me. She said, I'm sorry, Kevin, you'll never have this watch. That's when I beat up Pierre. <laughs> but, so what do you think it is about independence? I, I think there's, just seeing the different manufacturers that we visited today, there's something so different you feel as soon as you walk in the doors here. What, what are your overall just feelings about independence? You've shopped around so frequently. When you're only making 900 pieces, mm -hmm. I mean, are you, think about how small that is in the it's context incredible. of the globe. 900 watches. Our high school is bigger. I mean, it's crazy. I had a small high school. I mean, that, that's so you're collecting watches knowing that the references come and go, they'll never be made again. This is the first right here. The this first right now. First and let me tell you, that feels beautiful. Look at that watch. Teddy, that is. It looks good on you. It's, it's, it's a spectacular piece. I love it. it brings a tear to my eye. I don't see any tears yet. Yeah, but I'm going to cry. Don't worry. <laughs> but, you know, anyways, the, the point is you go into the journey with the company, with the maker, with the society of others that is a camaraderie. When you go to a Jorn Society dinner, it's beyond crazy. The people there are so passionate and, and so infected and so into it that you want to be part of that club. You want to be part of that family. You want to be in that journey with them. You know, it, it's and, I, and I'm the next. The only thing I'm thinking about what's my next piece from Jordan. Yeah, you're that, I mean, you're like, that addicted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stop now. I got to go down the road mm -hmm. because these will be priceless one day. My son's already saying, I want one of those. I'm, I'm saying to him, unfortunately, they're coming in the coffin with me to the afterlife. I have to. <laughs> are keep you serious about that? Are you I, really, really going to actually do I, that? I, Come I, on. Can't, I can't give these up even when I'm dead. What am I going to do? I'm going to need them. And I'm going in perpetual time. I'm going to need a watch. <laughs> It's a big problem. You're gonna bring all of them with you. I don't know, I can't leave them. You know, and I travel with three of these at a time. So it's, it's uh, and I'm looking forward to next season of Shark Tank because I showed them to wardrobe and they were fascinated. They, they'd never seen such imagery on the face. I mean, there's really art here. It's like a painting. If you had to make a prediction for next season of Shark Tank, which one you'd wear the most frequently? Just give me your outfits. Just thinking of the outfits and yeah. what you want to present on TV. Well, that's I, a different I, question. Artemis has seen this one. Mm -hmm in an image and she does the, she said, that's spectacular. Let's go with this. I said, no, I want to wear them all. She said, this one is, this is it. This is a beautiful piece for camera. And it's so slick and so beautiful and so tight and crisp. She liked this too. She doesn't know the prices. She doesn't care. It's mm -hmm. how it looks. She loved this, mm -hmm. the least expensive one. And then I was really, I wanted her to think about, this is, this is almost, F.P. Joran's take at a Daytona, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. I thought it would look great. She didn't love it as much. And I, she said, it's so busy. I said, it doesn't matter. I want to wear it. And I'm starting to fight with her. Because <laughs> unless she says, yes, I can't wear it. This one was a winner. She said the same thing. It's beautiful. But she was confused by it. She saw it and said, what's going on there? What are all those dials? What are they doing? I said, this is a remarkable piece. She said, but how... How do you tell the time? Good question. <laughs> Anyways, I love them all. I'm going to wear them all. They're, they're spectacular. I'm Look, you can get very passionate about this, this brand because it's not like anything else. Mm -hmm. It's true. And when I'm you not, see a Jordan watch, you know it's a Jordan watch. Yeah. And, that's, and I feel it's a very special uh, relationship and journey. And um, I'm just happy I'm in it.
Awesome. Well, it's been a great journey today. Kevin. Yeah. So I I mean, we, we've done time. some crazy stuff, and you've made me spend some money today, Teddy. I did. I did You're like a personal watch shopper. We should but do you, it again. You, you, you know, you took me some some very interesting pieces, and I'm, I'm happy. But this this is this is the anchor zone here. This is a great way to end off the day. Well, yeah. Kevin, thank you again. Thank you. If you guys like the video, be sure to thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Also, head over to Kevin's channel. We're going to do a video for him as well. Ask Mr. Wonderful segment, which we're going to record right after this. And if you get the infection of the Jorn virus, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>